So hi guys, I'm Engineer Yedi. Today we are looking into the solution to the chemistry NEPCO 2021. And uh, we have the set of objective questions for this slide uh, available. And we are going to be providing quick solution to each and every one of them. This is not a concept video class. It's just a class to provide solutions to the following set of questions. So you can subscribe to this channel and uh, very soon in the next 20 to 25 days, concept will be uploaded to the channel. So we start with this. The first question is an increase in pressure of a gas results in a decrease of its dash. According to Boyce's law, we might have studied in our early classes, we can say directly that uh, when pressure is the increase, what we're going to notice is what there will be, what also what increase or decrease in volume. As Boyce has expressed that, pressure volume is always constant. Mm -hmm. So what we just want to know is just to recall our formula or our law, Boyce's law, that the higher the pressure, the lower the volume. Question two says, uh, during the extraction of iron, limestones combine with acidic impurity in the blast furnace to produce dash. Limestone is uh, written as a calcium triazocarbonate 5 CaCO3. Acidic impurity is a silica diuride as SiO2, everybody knows. This will give you CaSiO3, which you call slack. I hope you still remember this from your concept class and the answer to that is this. Question three in sequence, we have uh, 12 grams of uh, water is saturated with, by 15 grams of uh, potassium chloride, chloride at 20 degrees Celsius. The question is, we are to calculate the solubility of potassium chloride at 20 degrees Celsius. In bracket, we are given the potassium is 39 and chlorine is 35.5. One thing we have, you need to study here is that this is a saturated solution. And remember the solution is equal to solute plus solvent. So directly, we don't need to recall our, our formula we blend in early classes. All we just need to do here to get the solubility because it was saturated already. So it's, it's solution on its own. So to get the rate at which it's soluble is just 12 plus or 15. So because it was the solid mix and that is already a saturated solution and that will give us 27, which is valid. So 27 should be correct here. The correct answer is 27 or oh, fine, choice D. Directly the next question says uh, a plastic which cannot be softened by it. There are two types of plastic from a concept class. We might have learned we have thermoset and thermoplastic. Thermoset because of the set, they have been set. In thermal forces, they are very, very high. And because of that, they cannot be what softened. Whereby thermoplastic can easily be what softened. So thermoset is the answer as well into the nature of the question. We move in sequence to question of this. We have uh, the reaction between alkanoic acid and alkanol. The basic concept we've learned from early class is this esterification. We are saying, yes, students, like uh, I was talking about, the question we have here was, uh, we have to recall our organic chemistry and about organic chemistry, we can quickly recall that uh, the action between alkanoic acid and alkanol is called esterification reaction, and it's gonna give us alkanoate and water. So directly, I just need to pick it I hope you guys still remember all this stuff. And the next one should be, we have uh, the reaction between sodium hydroxide solution and nitrogen four oxide solution is that. We might also have recall about the uh, reaction of nitrogen. Nitrogen was discovered by Rutherford in a concept class. I am not going into details. I will quickly show you the reaction directly. This reaction is common. In, in chemistry very well. When you react a sodium hydroxide with nitrogen forms, this is NO2 is combining with sodium hydroxide. Remember, because of the OS. OS means oxidation state. Don't worry, very soon I'm going to upload the concept video to this channel of our chemistry, where you see all chapter concepts available on the channel. So directly, we have sodium combined with that to give you NaNO2. It also combined to give NaNO3 and finally to also eat water. So this is one of the neutralization reaction of nitrogen oxide, which students need to keep in mind. So you go for what goes with what I have just explained. And if you have gone for that, I think an answer will be right. NaNO2, NaNO3, then the water. So this is 
choice D will be valid for that. We move to the next slide. So about the next slide, my dear student, we have uh, consider the reaction represented here. We have hydrogen gas combined with iodine gas to give us hydrogen iodide, all our gas. The concept class you might have studied when each change or enter is negative, is an exothermic reaction. The question says which of the following takes place when the temperature of the reaction vessel is decreased? So favor forward reaction according to the chart that you can quote is that uh, more forward reaction will be got to be favored when you decrease pressure and when you decrease temperature. Temperature is decreased according to the line of question. So more of this because the pressure will shift to the water to the right. So more of hydrogen iodide will be produced. The yield of hydrogen will be yield of hydrogen tends to increase. The next is uh, which of what or which roles does sodium chloride play in soap preparation? Basically from concept video class you might have also studied that uh, Soap is produced from a process you call alkaline hydrolysis. And process generally is called saponification, soap making. So there is a particular role that sodium chloride plays there. You might quote it from your teachers or instructors in concept class that uh, it is used to do what we call, it's either, you write, it decreases the solubility of soap, decreases soap solubility by separating by separating the soap, separate the soap from what? From glycerol. So you can always keep this at the back of your mind. In fact, in UTM standard question, these are so common questions you always come up with. It separates, it decreases the solubility of the soap so that what? By separating soap from what? Glycerol. I think from here we have choice E. And the next one here is a chemical change includes the following dash. We've learned this from early classes. In our year 10, that is excess one that uh, there is what we call uh, RFMH. This is an abbreviation I do in concept video class to explain all this. So, easily reversible new new substance form, changing mass and what great heat loss. These are properties of what chemical processes. And if you look at this, we can check the composition, which of the following is not. So, anyone that leads to formation of new substances is a chemical. So, we are looking for physical change here. Yeah. All this here, what we have is what when you dissolve what sugar in, in water, sugar will dissolve in water. You know that there's nothing that is going to form, either sugar or salt, that is a physical process. The next we move to what we have here. The chemical process that is represented by the equation, we can see this is sodium triazocarbonate, you can say pentahydrate. From constant video class, we have talked about water of crystallization. And in water of crystallization, you've learned a lot. When it was exposed to here, it is given one mole has been what you can see only nine nine the other one has been what lost to the what environment or whatever surrounding you call it so that is a process you call what inflorescence which i believe every student preparing for this exam or that has written this exam might have what studied the next one here i have given that 32.0 gram of sulfur contains this amount of atoms they said how many atoms are there in 2.7 grams of aluminum okay Fine, this is calculation, and because of time, I'm actually racing against time. I will be fast to do this, and I will only play you through that, but you can quickly do that. This is the number of, uh, this is what we call the number of atoms. You can get the numbers of moles directly. Numbers of moles is mass over molar mass. Similarly, you can say numbers of moles is number of particles over Avogadro's constant. So you can get that, and directly, if you get that, you can get the molar mass of the other atom. What am I saying? Let me quickly show you. Number of mole is equal to mass over the molar mass. Everybody knows that in the concept class. Number of moles of this is 32, is the mass. The molar mass of sulfur is uh, 32. That is one mole of this. It's reaction. So sulfur so contains this number of particles, remember? So number of particles is also number of mole over Bogato's constant. If you divide this one by Bogato's constant, you are still going to get one mole. Anyone you want to use, I hope you understand. So, how many atoms you are looking for? The number of atoms or particles from are there in what in 2.7 grams of aluminium. All the same, I may not even put this into consideration. All I need to do is just sulfur so is uh, written as this, aluminium is written as air now three plus. But from that, we can do the same formula numbers of mole is mass over molar mass. You can do 2.7 is the same formula, 2.7 is divided by. Molar mass is 27. I hope students understand that. 
year one, year 10. One divided by 10 is 0.1. You can always point your calculator, like I said, I'm wasting too much of time on numericals, which I don't like. Why I don't like that is that I love doing it very quickly, but for understanding's sake, but I have time limits. So if the 0 0.1 is here, as a number, I hope I am correct and I should be. So the next thing you're just gonna do here, my dear student, is just use the second formula we have. We have three on that constant class. So you can watch that when they are available on this channel. The number of moles are equals to numbers of particles which you are looking for. How many atoms? I will take that as x divided by Avogadro's constant. So which I can also just do directly. So Avogadro's constant is 6.03 times 6 by 23. You understand then multiply by 0 0.1 0 0.1 is like one times 10 is square negative one so you are shifting 23 by one that is 22. i hope students get to that so directly i can go for 6.02 times 22. i hope you understand and if not watch the concept video supplementary available next month middle of next month all concepts will be posted on the channel which of the following is diatomy from early classes we have studied Diatomy that all gas all gases are diatomic except noble gas. You can quote me, all gases are diatomic except noble gas. So what I need here is just to check which of them, which of the following elements is diatomic. Noble gas, argon is not going to be diatomic. Carbon is not a gas. I just need to look for the gas. This is not a gas. This is a gas. This is not a gas. I hope students get that. On to the next one. The type, the type of chemical bond that exists between potassium and oxygen is dash. Now, basically, we have learned also from early classes that potassium is a metal, oxygen is a non-metal. So from early classes, we might have told in concept class that metals and non-metals are bonded together by ionic or electrovalent bond. So you go for that. Ionic is choice D. We don't need to waste time. The next question is uh, what we have here. About the next question here, guys, we need to keep it at the back of our mind as well. This is mostly academic chemistry channel solution to uh, we just concluded our NECO 2021. So we have this, the element in group one of the periodic table is called alkaline metals. Everybody knows that. Group two is an alkaline at metal. Group three, four and five, you can call them transition elements if you like. But we have other names, we call them. You know, we have oxygen family, we have boron family, we just call them by the name of their first member. Six are carcogen, seven are halogen, and eight is noble gases so from there you can say this is alkaline metals and you can pick choice b and that is valid the next question we have here is uh an oxide of uh, xo2 has a vapor density of 32 mm -hmm. so directly what is the atomic mass atomic mass of this now you can quickly recall from your early classes what is the atomic mass of x x o2 is equals to you can see that concept video class you might have studied that uh, the vapor density, relative molecular mass is twice of vapor density. So we should always keep that at the back of our mind. And uh, whenever we are solving questions on this, we always make that our normal stuff. So here vapor density is two times 32 is at 64. Directly you can do this, you are looking for X. Everybody know oxygen is 16, 16 twos are 32. So X plus 32 is at 64, directly you can Make X the subject of the formula and you have 32. I hope you understand this. Move to the next one. Which of the following is not a normal sort? From what you might have studied, normal sort has complete dissociation of hydrogen ion or hydro hydroxyl ion. So this is an acidity because of the presence of this. The same thing to this. So normal is not a normal. This is acidic. Everything here are normal sort because they don't have hydrogen or hydroxyl ion in there. So this is which of the following is not a normal the answer to the question is a as a is what acidic sort we move in that sequence and uh, we can quickly go and run away from calculation that is what i'm trying to do the product of electrolysis of dilute sodium sodium chloride solution with platinum electrode is dash. you can do that if you have not learned concept video class of uh, this topic you can try and learn that when we post and as well you can also learn it in another way that is by watching the solution to all what we have provided on our solution center page now as i've said you can just quickly do this directly and how do you go about this it's quite simple and direct this is our sodium chloride is written as na plus and cl minus i'll just be quick and when you dissolve in water h plus oh minus what do i know 
I know that what element below we displace element above in the what in what electrochemical series hydrogen is below base. I'm losing position of the ions in the electrochemical. So hydrogen is here. The same thing happens here. OH will be discharged and OH will later produce oxygen. We've done, we can write the reaction OH minus, but please, because of time, because I have a lot to do in this video slide. So you have a you can balance and store. So hydrogen and oxygen is what I'm looking at. So we just need to be careful because, oh, are they really true? We are talking about dilute, you can see, concentration will come in. That would have been what we make me actually miss that. So be careful about that. When you have dilute, another factor we have heard, and the factor we call concentration of the ion. So due to the concentration, something will change. So in this place, we have the same thing I said, hydrogen is discharged at this particular compartment. And uh, please be careful. Now at the other compartment, because it is a what? It is a dilute solution and it's platinum electrode. I'm very right, it's still oxygen. Please note that. So hydrogen and oxygen is what I'm looking for, and that is that. The next one is calculation about this one. What current in ampere will deposit 2.7 of aluminum in two hours? Convert two hours to seconds. My dear student, I will be fast. So you have 3,006 times two is 7,200. The formula you have learned from concept class is a relative molecular mass. You multiply by current and time. That is IT. It's not it. IT. You divide by C times I. C stands for the charge on this. The mass you have here is 2.7 is equals to the relative molecular mass directly was given as 27. We are going to ah. use this directly. Current times time. Current is what you are looking for. Time is 7,200. You are dividing charge of aluminum is three ah. by 96,500. 96, so directly what we have here should have been us breaking down a lot of time. I'm going to break down. Double zero gets canceled out. You can do that at your own. Three can go here one. Here is nine. I can also say before because I have what is here, I can make isobar formula here. Just point your calculator directly. I take do that. I do that one here. I say I will be equals to twelve point seven. We are multiplying by nine sixty five. We are dividing the answer by seventy two times nine. So directly, I can even cut nine here one nine here three. Then the answer we have is what we have here directly. You can just try this as a 12 point. I think we need to do this again because, because what we have there is not actually accurate. You can say we have a, I'm trying to punch calculator. And I'm trying to raise against time. Again, another way to remove this one here, one year 0.3. So all I have is 0 0.3 times 965. So now will be better. We are dividing the answer by 72. And please, I'm not gonna do this thing two times, it's four. I'm getting four as the answer. You can confirm that. The answer I have is 4.0. And, and that is that. I'm running. I'm racing against time. 19 says uh, <laughs> yet again, numericals. Now, about this, we can we can quickly take this current of four arms. The same formula was passed through copper two tetrahedral source of its six solution. The question asks for the calculate the mass. Direct formula you have here. You can just use that again. Mass is relative molecular mass is 64. We are multiplying that with current and time. Current is four. The time is how many hours? One hour is a one hour is a sixty times sixty three thousand six hundred seconds. We are dividing the answer by copper is two, and uh, the Faraday is ninety six five hundred. So directly you can do this. Two zero gets cancelled out. You can do is two year one, two year two. So that directly you have sixty four times two is eight hundred and twenty eight. Multiply by that thirty six. Divide the answer by 965. So please, the answer is what I need. I think that we tell you with option A, B, C, or D. We have uh, the right answer we have is 4.7, according to 4.77. 4.77 is approximately 4.8 gram. And that is the valid answer. Next question is 17. Uh, about 17 we have, our uh, 4.8 is this. About this, which of the following is a basic salt? I have explained that here, I look for the, on the solve hydroxy ion. And about that, where is OH? Choice B. 21, please. I'm going to leave some of the questions for you guys to do because of time. What percentage by mass of sodium is present in the compound of this? So all we need to do is get, get the molar mass of this. Sodium is 23 times 2. 23 twos are 46. 
you know the formula from concept class 46 divided by i'm going to do this one this should be 101 46 46 plus uh, 12 46 plus 12 is uh, 60 58 58 plus uh, 3 times 16 3 16 is uh, 48 58 plus 48 is going to give me 106 106 plus uh, that is a uh, plus this is 10 times 18 10 times 18 is 180 106 plus 180 okay so you can do that and you are going to have uh, 206 106 plus 180 that is uh 106 plus 180 is 286 so all i need is 48 divided by 46 divided by 286 i multiply the answer by 100 finish up that will be the question question answer I, i'm waiting to see if we have it 44,600 divided by 286. I think 16.08. I'm not sure. And we have 16.08. I'm good in cutting numbers. I just want to, I don't want to be assumed. That is 16.08 is the valid answer to that. We move to the next slide. About the last slide, we have a <clears throat> question 22 to true 30, which is halfway. Directly, we can say in the extraction of iron, which of the following reaction does not take place? From Fornas reaction, we have talked about that. This will break down valid. This we react with this. I talked about that in question one. The next one is uh, this reaction. We also talked about uh, carbon four oxide is combining with uh, with carbon, and uh, we are having this. Then here, this is also valid. Then the next one is wrong. This is wrong, and this is uh, correct. So the answer to this is choice D because that third one is not possible. The next one is I have to up my pace. The ability of carbon to form. A long chain or ring is known as that. We've talked about this introduction. I will talk about catenation. So please keep that in mind under the introduction to carbon and its compound. Catenation is given by that definition. And next is that the metal that can be extracted from cassiterite. Let it be told. Let me tell you that cassiterite is an ore of tin. So metals you can extract from that is from its ore. The other form of carbon is diamond. And diamond is what? A carbon. Please keep that one. Diamond is taken to be one of the strongest substance known. Excuse me, the next one is question 26. An acid is substance which in the presence of water produces ozonium or hydronium or hydrozonium. This is definition you might have been given in your concept class and in your early classes. The next one is sulfur exists in different forms in the same physical state. This phenomenon is known as dash. Please, we need to keep this at the back of our mind that the ability of an element to exhibit different form without changing its physical state is called allotropy. Allotropy is also known as polymorphism. Allotropy is also known as polymorphism. Please note that. The next thing here is a question. I'm running from calculation. The component of universal indicator solution can be separated by that. Anything that has color pigment, you use polymato. Chromatography. Chromatography is correct because indicator is used to look for the end point. I hope you understand that. And this is also in class 10 at is SS1. Question, whatever we have 30 here, which of the following atom contains the highest number of electrons in its atomous shell? Everybody knows this is two by six. This one doesn't have any vacancy. Then this is a two H5. And uh, this is two H1. And this is two H2. So you don't need to disturb yourself as you can see. Never ever you pick this one because this has complete what is what octet or what you call the octet. So this is zero, no electron. That is the meaning. So by what we have here, the answer to the question is this. As you can see, this has five, five. So please keep that at the back of your mind. Don't want to make mistake by picking argon because that is the only technical there. Should I leave you to solve this? Hydrocarbon with a molar mass of 26 consists of this. I should subtract 100 minus 92.3. That is our 7.7, I guess. 7.7. So 7.7 should be what we have to put into consideration here. 7.7 should be correct. So I'm trying to say I do carbon contain a molar mass of density. Consists carbon is 92.3. Just have to be calm. Carbon is 92.3. Then the remaining one, because it's hydrocarbon, is 7.7. Uh, then from here, we can say we are dividing by the relative atomic mass. The relative atomic mass of carbon is 12. I don't have time for all this, but I just have to show you 
I hope you have learned this in the passage. This is still 7.7. This will give us more than up to 7.72, I guess. I think 7.72 approximately. So divide by the lowest number, that is 1, 1. So what I'm saying is empirical formula times N is molecular formula, early classes. So you can finish up that at this side. So CH multiplied by N, the way your teacher might have explained in concept class, must give you the molar mass, which is 26. We are looking for the molecular mass of this. Get this, 12 plus 1 is at 13. 13 is then at equals to 26. N will be equal to 26 by 13. That is true. So start distributing C2, H2 with a body, and that is called what? A time. So that's the answer to that. 31 to 60 will be accelerated pitch. Please note that. Now, I think, hope I did not miss a question there. Fine. So the next question we have is 31, 32, 33. Our first of all, tackle questions that are not what? A piece of blue litmus paper was dropped into a gas jar. The litmus paper turned pink, then it's bleach. Chlorine bleach. Chlorine is the only one that can bleach. Please note that out of the option. So folks, I can also bleach another, another element. But here, yeah, all out of the options we have here, chlorine bleach by reduction and it should change the color to, to pink. Next one we have, which of the following pairs of halogens are gases at XTP? My dear student, let it not be though that chlorine is gas at STP, standard temperature and pressure, and as well as fluorine. Students should keep it in mind that iodine is solid at room temperature, whereby bromine is liquid. Let it be known. So the next one to this is uh, which of these compounds will not give oxygen when eating? I have done this in my content video class as well. You prepare oxygen from the composition of this, the composition of this, composition of this and this, but this one can never give you what, what you are talking about. The answer is this. I can quickly show you NH4, NO3. When you decompose this with it, you expect something to, you expect water and what? Take the maximum amount of water. Water is H2O. This is H4. Put two at the back. Two times two is at four. All the hydrogen has been used. Two times what? This is O2. What are you left with? You have N is here. You have two of what has been consumed. Remain one. This is nitrogen monoxide. And this is the way we produce this in the laboratory. So you can see that. So that will never give you the what? The, the oxygen we are looking for. So A is valid. When sodium dissolves in water, the resulting stuff is what? Whenever Whenever you dissolve uh, a metal in water, you are going to produce what they call oxides, early classes. So there are different types of oxides. If you have Na2O, you can see my dear student, Na2O, this is a metal oxide of, of metal are called basic oxide. So note that. So we can always keep that at the back of your mind when we are doing exam. Just in, we add sodium plus water, you have sodium oxide. The sodium oxide, we have uh, another type of oxide which is come from uh, non-metal. When you dissolve them in water, they give you acid. So keep that at the back of your mind. So this is basic oxide, and you are going to talk about for basic. So please note that. But look at the question. This is very good. It is what alkaline. I hope you know alkaline and basic. Soluble base are called alkaline. It is soluble. So please note that. The next one we can say, I can also do is an unknown gas with an irritating smell was bubbled through a solution containing K2Cr207. That is what is written as potassium dichromate seven or six rather the solution change from orange to to green it has what it has the color it has changed the color and because of that we can quickly say this is what so for for oxide in our concept video class we've talked about the impact of what change of color of what so2 which will give you a what a what a complex chromate ion which is what which has the color of green and that is the reaction when you get so2 with k2cl2 07. In fact, this is one of the three uh, word tests that let us know that this can act as an oxidizing agent. Please keep that at the back of your mind. The next is that the major constituent of air. I think I should leave that guy, that one for you guys. The next one is nitrogen is about 78 percent a bit present in the what atmosphere. Everybody knows that. I hope you still remember so that I will not just leave. The oxidation state of chlorine in KClO3 is what we call this what potassium trioxychloride what five. So you don't need to solve, and if you want to solve. Distribute OS oxidation state plus one. You understand negative one, then X three times one minus one, three times this one. You know what I'm talking about, then you finish up. Oh, you can do it. So you can always try and do that for cloning X, then this is minus two. You know how to do that. And if you want me to do it, that is one. That is uh you are looking for cloning plus X, three times minus two minus six is equals to zero. Solve this equation, you're gonna have. I'm sorry for rushing because I have fishes to fry. 
Look at this. We have group O elements are only active because they don't have a can electron. We did something related to that. The amazing point is the highest energy level has been fully occupied. I don't need to read any other option because it satisfies what I know. I think there's one more here. How many grams of hydrogen will vibrate when six grams of magnesium be born was oh god? We have to react. So from reaction, we have magnesium combined with uh, hydrogen, hydrochloric acid to give us magnesium chloride is MgCl2 plus H2. Directly, you have to balance the equation. Cloning is true, cloning is true. Everybody knows hydrogen is true, that is true for every year. I think the equation is balanced without any further delay. So here we can say one mole of this one, yield one mole of this. Thank God it is one, one mole. So I'm just going to use this one directly. Number of mole is mass over molar mass. What is molar mass of magnesium? Everybody can see. So we have, is 24. Six divided by 24 is 0 0.25. I hope students are getting that. So numbers of moles is mass over the molar mass of magnesium is 24. That is a one over four. I hope I'm right. CCF one, CCF four, and that is 0 0.25 moles. So if you have 0 0.25 moles, the number of moles is what the question asks. I hope I'm right. How many grams of hydrogen? Oh my God, it's number of grams. So number of moles is mass over molar mass. Now I'm looking for the mass. So mass over molar mass. This time around, it is one, one mole. I will use the same 0 0.25 multiplied by the molar mass of what are we looking for? Hydrogen chloride, according to the question. How many grams of hydrogen chloride will be liberated when six grams of magnesium will be dissolved in this? So hydrogen chloride is, um, oh, I'm comparing, look at me. It is one ratio two. That is the issue. So one mole is uh, this, two mole will be two times this. What is two times? Is 0 0.5 or 0 0.50. So I'm gonna use 0 0.50 is equals to the mass divided by the molar mass we have Molar mass of HCl should be 36.5, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So the mass of HCl react will be 36.5 times 0.5. So that will be the question answer. And please, you can confirm that on what we, what we want to do. And if it is not there, then the answer to the gram of this one should be 18.5. But that is one thing about setting question in NEP. I do tell my, my colleagues that are sometimes their question, the question I want you to calculate the number of moles of what HCl. This is the number of moles of uh, magnesium. And for HCl is what? It's 0 0.50 because all options here are in what moles. Look at it. A standard exam making mistake. But if it is gram, this is the gram, 18.5 from calculator. The next one, I move to the next slide. 40 says, what type of bond will be formed when an element with high electron affinity combines with elements with low ionization energy? Now, let it be told very quickly that uh, Electron affinity. If you say something has electron affinity, that means it has tendency to accept electron. So that means I want to accept from you every time. Now, when you say something has ionization energy, it means its ionization potential is high. It is not ready for you to remove an electron. It's not easy. You need a huge amount of energy. So what I'm trying to say is that it's not possible for something that has ionization energy to give something that it can. This one can never give this one. So they would rather prefer what shiny. So something that is, is just like I'm pompous, you are pompous. Yeah, let's be now. Everybody is ready to succumb. So it's just the observation. You have to understand concept, but I am not here to explain concept. And what this means is what they are sharing. So which of these share? Everybody knows. Covenant. Next one, please, guys. An atom X with electronics configuration of 2, 4, 10, 11 belongs to what period? You, you should know that. I don't think I should waste my time on that. Now, Sodium is that you can predict that and you can do that. You know, sodium is in group one and also in what period one. So the next one, now, an organic compound which reacts with bromine to form a compound with formula CH3CHBRCHA. You need to be careful. You can see this is BR, not BR2. So you don't think about a double bond or triple bond. So be careful. This type of reaction is not that common in arcane. But the answer to this is count the number of carbon one. I don't want to waste your time, two, three. Watch my concept video. It will be available very soon on the channel. I will upload all concepts or chapter with respect to our syllabus here. So you just count the numbers of carbon three, three carbons are propped. Then I said it is a single bond. Why? Because there's no Markovsnikov rule or anything that. So the answer to that, like I said, is uh, 
is propane. Please be careful about that. I think I lost the network, but I'm back. It's propane, and that is very correct. So please, guys, note that. The next one, which water from river contaminated with alkali waste, we have the alkali. Alkali is our base. So base is always between what, 8 to 14. You know that from your pH scale. I don't want to waste time. The option that goes with that is 9. Do you understand that? And that is that. The next is, uh, which of the following method is suitable for separating petroleum fraction from crude oil? We have learned about fractional crystal, like fractional distillation. Sorry about that. It's not good to rush sometimes. I have things to do and I have to understand. That is why I'm rushing. I don't teach like this. And I've told you, you watch concept video if you want to have a deep knowledge in all these stuff. The next is that the process involved in decomposition of sugar by enzyme and exactly what I want to pick the other time. So enzyme, zymase, remember? In concept class, for whole level, it's very simple. You call what? Fermentation of sugar. Very good. The next is 46. Which of the following mathematical representations is for Graham's law? According to Graham, the rate of diversion is inversely proportional to square root of density. So if you take the first one, you take uh, the second rate, then you're going to take the second word density, the first word density, because it's an inverse. This is the way we relate. Let that be known. The rate is inverse to square root of density, and this is the way we do that. So be careful about that. And that is that. The next is in the next slide. 47 says uh, we have the density of a certain gas is 2.0 gram per dm cube at standard temperature and pressure. What is the molar mass of the gas in gram? Density is mass by volume. Molar volume of the gas at STP is still what? 22.4. Answer will still be 22.4. You are shocked, Abby. Let me show you. Watch my concept video. You will understand. But for you to know what I've done, I don't want you guys, you can just say, we just have to understand. Density is mass. Oh, 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 oh. I will have actually screwed that. It's mass by volume. The volume is 22.4. The density is 2. 22.4 times 2 is, is uh, 40. Four points, whatever. But remember, you are to find the molar mass. I get the molar mass. You can the number of moles mass. Well. So the answer to this is not this. Like I said, I would have been shocked by missing that. You can see two is equals to mass over the volume here is what is twenty two point four. What do I know? I cross multiply, and this will give me forty four point eight. I hope you understand that. The next one, according to Charles's Charles's law, Charles law. The volume of the gas becomes zero at what? You know, volume increases with temperature according to charge. So if, if you want it to become zero, then this will be at standard temperature. We are talking about degrees Celsius. We just need to be careful. You understand? So if you say T is equal to 273 plus degrees Celsius, you understand? So if you want the volume to become zero, volume is zero proportional to temperature. Temperature two must be zero. At what temperature do you think this will be zero? is when this one is also negative 273. I hope students get this. Because it is when you say 273 plus minus 273 that you are going to have zero. And that is why we are going with this. So let's keep that at the back of our mind. So in terms of this, if you say 273 minus 273 degrees Celsius, that is the same thing as what? Zero Kelvin in what? In temperature. And that is why I'm going for this. And I say is that which gas is evolved when I cannot react with sodium, with sodium. Now we don't need to waste our time. The answer, the answer to this is hydrogen. We've done that directly in concept video. And please, sodium hexoxide plus hydrogen is abbreviated. The next is Bourette's test is carried out. Copper one oxide, Bourette's test. Remember in food test, we test for protein by using Bourette. I'm sorry, I'm rushing. I've told you, don't worry. You have to learn the concept. A browning test, the word browning will take our mind towards what? Trioxonitrate five. Please, and we write trial as NO3 minus. The next one, guys, watch concept video about test for what? Analytical chemistry. I have videos on concept. By next month, you are going to see them available on this glorious channel. The next is uh, the final product. The final product of reaction between this and the presence of this. Let it be known that uh, H2SO4 in this reaction is a dehydrating agent. And for many classes, you are told that the dehydrating agent is just a uh, they don't take part. You just remove water from what you have here. What is water? H2O. Remove H2O from this. You're going to have C2H5OH. In the presence of that particular something, at this temperature, you are going to have C2H4 if you remove H2O. 
So that is I say minus H2, and the work is carried out by this, and which is the diagenic. These are things, and this is what 18, which is also pertinent in biology. 53 says hydrogen is used for the following, except that class 10 also SS1, conversion of coal to petrol. Yes, hydrogen is used for that. Extinguishing fire is not possible. So now manufacturing of ammonia, in fact, most of the hydrogen is used in manufacturing of what? Ammonia. We call that evapor evapor process. Manufacturing of margin, yes, hydrogenation of oil, you know that. Synthesis of hydrogen, yes, of course, you add hydrogen to cloning to give you hydrochloric acid. So answer to that is B directly, and we know why. CO2 is majorly used in what? Extinguishing plant. Next is 54. When solids, when a solid substance disappears completely as a gas on it, and then it's moved from solid to gas. So directly, we should know that uh, solids disappearing to gas should, we should always keep it at the back of our mind that uh, we call the process sublimation. Everybody knows. And if you don't know, there's a first time to everything in life. So this is correct for 56 or 54. We move to the next slide. Don't forget that uh, this is most the academic chemistry channel. We can subscribe and invite friends for detailed understanding of how to get answers to examination and also prepare you with concept. We also have related channel, which you can search for the physics channel. And to get the best out of us, you can add to as well join us on Telegram, Facebook, or another social media. And this is question 55. About 55, we have the shape of ammonia molecule. Time and time again, we've talked about these and uh, we've talked about Lewis structure and some other thing for in our concept video. Ammonia has a special shape we call triagonal pyramid directly. But you can always ask, why is it triangular pyramid? We can tell you it's because of the, what, the bond pier and the lone pier. That is how we get to know the shape in hybridization. So because I'm not here to teach concepts, only to provide accurate solution to all these questions. And that is why I'm going to pick what direct answer, which is triagonal pyramid. The next we say, the method that is used as, as a catalyst is hydrogenation. In fact, in your early classes for SSE students, you will be told that uh, Hydrogenation is the process of adding hydrogen what, to margarine or to oil to form oil in the presence of nickel as catalyst. I'm just, I know the way they teach in secondary school because I was one secondary school teacher. So, but now I can tell you that what is very easy to know that nickel is the catalyst we use in what? Hydrogenation because you have cramp. You might not know. The reason is what nickel is a transition metal. You can always keep that at the back of your mind. So we have other transition metals also here. Almost all options are transition in nature. The next is calculation. I will rush. I will run from it because I don't want it. I'm going to do those ones that are not calculation. Now we can see the, the position of an element in the periodic table is determined by, this is Dimitri Mendeleev periodic law. Abi electron, valence electron. Everybody knows that. Atomic radius, electron, number of neutron, number of proton in the atom, relative atomic. Abi, according to the man, he said, the position, Abi, the trend in the periodic table is the measure of what the atomic or atomic number. Uh, I'm picking atomic mass. I'm not sleeping on by. This is wrong, please. This is not atomic number. I was thinking it's atomic number. Atomic, atomic number. Atomic number is what? Numbers of proton. So please let us be careful and be guided. The next one says the following are uses of ammonia, except that ammonia is so simple to know. Now we can we need to be careful because sometimes. Chemistry can be tough in this type of question. Now, ammonia in treating insect bite, yes. In refrigeration, yes. Production of plastic, no. Production of margarine, no. Uh, the acid precipitate, yes. Ammonia can perform this, can do this. Ammonia can do this. Now, you can see I'm lying between this. Then, how do I know which is correct? Production of margarine, ammonia. Production of margarine is not possible. Do you get that? In production of plastic, yes, yes, it serves as a particular rule. So which makes it bad? You understand sometimes when you are faced with questions that are like that, these are where you conquer them. The next is a uh, calculation I'm running from, then now I don't have options than to do it. What quantity of current in amperes will deposit is 5.4 gram of aluminum in it? I've done something like this in other questions. That is one thing about NECO questions. Because they want you to be 60, they will always give you the same thing over and over again. Mass is a RMM, remember, times it. I say it is current and time. 
divided by charge times number of Faraday. Mass is given directly 5.4. Let us do direct substitution and continue from this side. 5.4 is equal to molar mass of aluminum at 27. You are multiplying with current, which you are looking for, exactly like what I did. The time here is eight hour. I will multiply 60 times eight to convert, not even 60 times eight. It is 3,600 times eight. 3,600 times eight, you can do that by your calculator. Eight times three is at 48. Eight times three is at 20, 24 plus six. 24 plus four is at, you have 28,800. I think it is right. 28,800, we are dividing this by, taking division by charge of aluminum is three, multiplied by 96,500. My method is two zero gets canceled out. Three year one, three year nine, so that we can cancel everything here. When you cross multiply, we can continue from this side. When you cross multiply, you make I solve a formula. You're gonna have something like this. You have 5.4. We are multiplying that with uh, 96,500 divided by, dividing this answer by nine times uh, 288. This is what I have, guys. And doing that, I have, uh, I have to break this. I know I can just, I can to make sure I have a direct answer. I can say now I can go in that one directly. And now I can go here one. I can say now I go here 0 0.6. So I multiply 0 0.6 by 965. I'm dividing the answer by 288. And doing that directly, I'm having 2.0 as my current year. And that is the right answer. Please note that. The last but not the least is uh, the volume of a gas at 310 Kelvin was 200. At this temperature, it was this. The time the volume in Kelvin, if the volume is uh is dust okay let's use charts we've talked this charts before we said v1 by t1 is v2 by t2 the volume here is 200 we are taking the vision of that by 310 and equals to the new volume is 250 we are taking the temperature to be unknown directly you can say this gets cancelled out this also gets cancelled out don't worry about my way i told you you watch my concept video you understand more about me this is 31 times 25 we are dividing the answer by two so directly, you can just do this. 31 times 25 divided by 2. You can say 31 times 12.25. Directly, you can also do that. I think the answer should be there. 116 or 77.1. Let's check to avoid error. We have uh, we can just try that because my wave mode sometimes, nobody is above error, but I'm not having any issues with this. I'm very sure the answer should be there. 388 should be correct, but let's do something. I'm going to use calculator now just to verify. 310 times 250 times 250, you are dividing the answer by 200. So I don't know why answer will not be there. Answer should be there. 387.5, that's the answer, and it's correct. This is the same thing you are going to get here. 387.5, so, and that is the answer. Approximately is 388. My guys, uh, guys, I'm sorry about uh, rushing up through this. It's because of time, you know, time is money. And again, you shall be seeing, uh, very soon you will be seeing questions on on different uh, examination and as well on other things you need to know with respect to concepts. Like I said, uh, to see more of us, join our other social platform and uh, see you guys soon in future video. Bye for now. Thank you.